Previously on X-Men. The podcast that looks back on X-Men comics, movies, shows, characters, and more. You can find more about this show and others like it at the network's website, RadioMeanwhile.com, where we have a forum for you to share your thoughts on this and upcoming episodes. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Previously on X. And please rate, subscribe, and share the show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Are you saying forum or forum? Forum. I have always wondered that. <laughs> like a forum. Like an for- internet forum. Forum. Yeah, you go to oh, the website, okay. there's a forum. Okay, yeah, sure. I mean, I guess you have to fill out a form to yeah, join the forum. Yeah, right, that's what, okay, so it's both. Like just a name and a password. There's a forum and a forum if on you, our website. There you go. <laughs> I'm Eric Mickles, known online as Dust vs. Tweak, and with me is Hilary Gunning. Hello. Today we are talking about the 90s animated series episodes. Not of the Sentinels. This is what I have been waiting for. This whole time? For the whole podcast. Oh. I mean, I guess the movies, too. Yeah. But really, this. Today's episodes are Night of the Sentinels, Part 1 and 2. Both of them. The double premiere. The X-Men's journey to television was one with struggles. Especially (laughs) after the failed pilot, Pride of the X-Men, which we talked about in our episode, Pride Pride of the X-Men. Pride of the X-Men. We talk a little bit about how hard it was for Margaret Loesch to get the X-Men to television. Uh, She had been fighting to get them on TV, uh, the Uh, to get the characters on TV, but most studios didn't like the idea of a serialized cartoon with melodrama and adult characters. Yeah, and let me tell you, Mm -hmm. that was something that really stood out when I was watching the episode today. She she was right. When she moved to Fox, she, I just found out this today, she started Fox Kids. Oh, really? I love Fox Kids! And she kept pushing for the X-Men show. Wow, good for her! Finally, she had to stake her job on the series. Her boss said if it didn't work, she was out. Wow. And she said, okay. And she's in. She's in. Woohoo! I have to learn all this stuff because I wasn't aware of this happening uh, at the time. But the show was planned. As a child. No, in 92, I would have been, at this point, I would have been six years old. All of the TV politics. Yeah. The like sh- smoking a cigarette, reading the newspaper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Freaking oh, Fox. Margaret Who do they Loach. think they Take are? Take it seriously, guys. The show was planned for September 1992. But due to the scope of the first season, and shoddy animation by Acom Studios, or Acom, I think it's Acom, the show had to be delayed. Notoriously shoddy, those Acom Are you familiar with Acom Studios? Oh, they are notoriously shoddy. And I knew that. The Batman animated series fired them. They were one of the... You know, I actually feel like I knew something about that. There are some episodes of the old 90s Batman animated show that you can tell are Acom, Mm -hmm. and apparently getting that studio on your episode was like a death sentence, (laughs) because you just knew what you were getting was not good. But they're a South Korean studio, and they were the studio that did most of the X-Men. Oh, okay. Yep. So, Night of the Sentinels, Part 1, aired on October 31st, 1992. Unfinished, with multiple mistakes and missing scenes. It aired that way? Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. And Part 2 on November 7th with the same issues. So, uh, Margaret Loesch used this to sell the network uh, and advertisers on the idea that they would have... Instead of having this be the, the, the premiere, this mm-hmm. would be a sneak peek in ah. October. So Halloween, uh, 92, it's a sneak peek of the X-Men. And instead, she fought for a big primetime premiere in January, which is not usually the time you do that. But uh-huh. she she sold the, the studio and advertisers on the idea that everyone else is going to be in reruns. Yeah. And they're going to be premiering this big, new, exciting show with Margaret episodes. Margaret Loesch is a genius! Yeah. <laughs> She's my new hero. She's your new hero? I love her. There you go. Blah. In the Eric book, is reaching for the book behind him. <laughs> previously on X-Men, the making of the animated series uh, by Eric Lewald, he mentions that Margaret Loesch said that for the most part, the primetime was a big hit because they got pretty much all the kids, but they didn't get as many adults as Fox had wanted mm-hmm. with the primetime. So they were thinking that they would get adults to watch this show. The adults started watching the show. Mm. I think they were going for an older audience, and I think they were trying to get the adult comic fans as well. That's really interesting. Um, The show would go on to be a ratings juggernaut. Oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) I wrote that, and then I told my wife, I was like, look what I just wrote. I bet her reaction was very similar to mine. Yeah, the show would go on to... This book, previously on X-Men, says half the televisions in America were watching the X-Men animated series. Oh, that's cool. So, oh, because everyone else was in reruns. Yes. I believe it's pronounced Sabin. Sabin? Right? I always say Sabin. Yeah. But it's because I grew up as a child knowing it, the, so I don't really know what it's supposed to be. This and Power Rangers were their shows, and they oh, were like... Oh, Power Rangers. They, and they were both on Fox, and that basically turned Fox into like a cartoon ju- juggernaut again. Juggernaut! And then they also had the Batman anime series, so they were killing it. And then... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Because of the X-Men cartoon, you would later get uh, Spider-Man as well. 
and oh, some yeah? not great Marvel cartoons, mm-hmm. like the whatever that Avengers one was I in the remember. 90s. The first two episodes, Night of the Sentinels, part one and two. These are some intense episodes. Yeah. So it opens with news footage yep. of Sabretooth. With Sabretooth displaying hey. downtown. Yep. Eric uh, Lewald, who helped conceive the show, who was one of the developers, he read some of the comics, but he wasn't like an X-Men expert. Mm-hmm. He read it for the show. So other other people would like, anytime it said like, insert random mutant, he was like, ah. here's North Star, and here's uh, Maggot. Maggot never makes it into the show. I don't know why Maggot's always the one. He's just so random, I guess. That's why the one... His name the, is Maggot? Maggot? We'll talk about him in a character spotlight sometime. He sounds delightful. His powers are that he has two maggots instead of a digestive system. That is the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> the episode opens with news footage mm-hmm. and two parents talking about how their daughter's a mutant, but it's their foster yeah. daughter. Well, it's a really cool juxtaposition right off the bat mm-hmm. because you have Sabretooth representing the mutant menace. Yeah. And then you have this super, like nice family they're not yeah. even they're not even being like mutants are scary mm-hmm. they're just like talking so calmly yeah. about like we just want to help her yeah jubilee is their daughter the future x-men jubilee whose powers are creating like pyrokinetics and yeah. also they're connected they, to uh e- electronics or electronics yeah. sometimes so in the comics it's such a description of her powers oh, but yeah. i've always just been like it's pyrokinetics yeah i never really because like, it does more damage than i thought it's like pyroplasmoids kind of thing it's That's it's a long-winded a description That's just made up. yeah note about jubilee uh-huh in my memory jubilee is just annoying but while, while, when I was watching this uh-huh. i thought she was hilarious hilarious <laughs> I wow thought she was great well she was just so like yeah. over it she's so 90s all the time yeah i think maybe that was That's, it i mean it's i was the, just digging the vibe we my wife and i were watching the new season of stranger things and oh, they yeah. went to a mall and she's like i've never seen a mall this crowded i'm like well you didn't go to the mall when you were in, in the 90s your wife said that yeah oh my word because i mean that's the fact that this movie, this this show starts in a mall, mm-hmm. in an arcade in the mall. In an arcade. So, which is... She has such a good line in that. Oh, yeah, when she, she destroys one of the, the games she's mm-hmm. playing, and the guy comes up by accident, and the guy comes over, and he's like, do you know how much that costs? And she's just like, yeah, a quarter. Drops those, <laughs> like, drops giant pink sunglasses. She's awesome. It's, it's funny, in the comics, her coloring is so, is just a ripoff of Robin, of Batman sidekick Robin. Oh. Like, the shorts are like green. Like, intentionally? Yeah. It's, it's more red, uh, red shirt, green yeah. pants. And in this, it's, it's, you know, less of a ripoff. Yeah, it's more, like, pink yeah. and... Sentinels are loose. They come the after Sentinels Jubilee. Sentinels are uh. loose. They're yeah. just, like, tearing walls down. Yeah. I guess I always picture the Sentinels as more of, like, a covert government thing. But they're just like walking down the street. Well, they're not pulling up lampposts. Yeah, Yeah, in this one, they're a. So the government is helping fund this Sentinel program run Mm -hmm. by Oliver Trask and Henry Gyrick. Yeah. And the idea is that there's a mutant registration. The Mutant Control Agency. The Mutant Control Agency. And they are basically categorizing and collecting names of mutants. Yeah. But they're actually using it to hunt mutants down with their new sentinels. Surprise, this government-funded yep. private agency yeah. registering mutants yeah. is evil. So the sentinels come into the mall, attack Jubilee. Mm-hmm. She runs into the X-Men who save the day. She joins the X-Men. Mm-hmm. And then she gets captured again. Yeah. And then the X-Men have to save her. But a lot happens in there. Yeah. Uh, in these two episodes. What, what, should, what should we start with? I guess I, will, I first want to mention, and this was intentional. Eric uh, Luwald talks about this a lot in the book, that Night of the Sentinels was chosen as the pilot mm-hmm. instead of Magneto, who will appear in the third episode. Yeah. Because he, he wanted the underlying theme of the show to be mutants versus non-mutant-powered mm-hmm. humans. Yeah. And the Sentinels and the mutant registration, all of that is much more in the theme with there. Mm-hmm. And then Magneto can become, you yeah. know, bring in Magneto. I right think that's after. a really good call. Even just from a storytelling standpoint, having him come in mm-hmm. the third episode mm-hmm. is just a strong placement for him because you sort yeah. of have, then he doesn't have to be involved and like bogged down in all of this. Right. It also, I mean, it will later help the idea that he's coming in after the Sentinels have already been loosed. Mm-hmm. So how do, how do you say he's wrong? Right, exactly. So, you get to see his motivation. Yep. Yeah, you're right. We, we talked about this in our X-Men 2 movie mm-hmm. podcast that the cartoon and the movie do it opposite wise oh, that yeah. uh the movies do magneto and evil mutants first mm-hmm. then the human threat and uh, i think the cartoon makes a good call with that 
So, especially Sentinels, because in the comics, Sentinels can go from, like, sometimes they're super scary and dangerous, mm-hmm. but a lot of times they're just cannon fodder. Yeah. And, I mean, they are cannon fodder in this one, mm-hmm. but they're also, like, they're presented as a pretty big threat. Well, at the very beginning, because nobody has seen them before, yeah. and so they're all like, what the heck? Yeah. And so... Yeah, you just have one or two that's, like, mm-hmm. freaking everybody out. And then by the end, yeah. there's, like, dozens of them. Yep. Uh, so Jubilee is in here as our point-of-view character. Mm-hmm. Kitty Pride was basically uh, forbidden, was made forbidden to be used after really? Pride of the X-Men. Just because That's was why bad? she never appears in this it cartoon. It wasn't her fault. <laughs> well, no. But Jubilee is going to take over that role. Yeah. And, and any... like, Who, what am I? Yep. What any... are you? <laughs> Explain everything. Any story that maybe had Kitty Pride in an important role mm-hmm. is just going to supplement Jubilee for that. Especially uh, Kitty Pride's like fairy tale episode. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, Jubilee's so much more 90s. Yeah, that's true. So, she definitely fits the vibe. Jubilee and Gambit are very prominent in this mm-hmm. show, but they're both about three to two years old in the comics. Really? Gambit only appeared in 1990 and Jubilee appeared in 89. Mm-hmm. So they're still relatively new if to the world. If you had told me that Jubilee was created specifically for, for the, the show, animated series, yeah. I would believe you. <laughs> she has that vibe just, about her. Yeah. In the mall, she runs into Rogue and Storm <laughs> yeah, and which Gambit. I loved that. I uh-huh. really liked that that Rogue and Storm drew first blood. Yeah. I, I just thought that was a really strong position to be yeah. placing two female characters in the 90s. Yeah, well, that was the other thing that the toy once once they started making toys they didn't they're like listen it doesn't matter how powerful your female characters are the the female heroes don't sell toys but yeah. they're like well yeah rogue is punching a sentinel in the head yep <laughs> and storm's the only one in costume right now so oh speaking of costumes uh-huh. did you see storm manifest her costume yeah. out of pure electricity <laughs> yeah she does that throughout the whole series and in the comics is she the only one who does that i don't know because their costumes in giant size x-men we find out are unstable molecules oh that's right but I no but wolverine's that. never like form of my costume and go yeah she just summons lightning down to to switch her costume mm-hmm. out. The idea that Sentinels, like, even Rogue and Storm, who are their most powerful, you know, mm-hmm. on the team pretty much, yeah. are still having, you know, trouble. It takes those two, Gambit, mm-hmm. and Cyclops to show up at the end. And Jubilee a little and bit. Ju- yeah, that's true. Jubilee knocks <laughs> she, him down. She does some damage. Gambit's all flirty. He's flirty. It's so funny. He's he like hardcore by... flirts at the at the store. He's he's at a store that's just called Shop on the on the side. <laughs> what is he buying? I don't. He's even buying remember. cards. That's right. But he's hey, he's unless I the... have somebody yeah. to play with. He he opens a pack of cards. Like I'll take these. Like looking at the cards, I'm like, you're just buying a pack of cards, he's man. Just buying a pack of cards. So. Also, don't open the merchandise before you. I know it. that's the thing. Do you want to hear something funny about why I have this memorized, which I just realized as I was watching it? Okay. I have like millions, millions. Uh-huh. of lines of this memorized right. and I remembered as I was watching that it's because I downloaded mp3s just indi- the audio just like no just like individual oh, lines okay. oh. it would just be like gambit mm-hmm. lines rogue lines yeah. and so I just have them oh. just like ingrained in my mind that will hopefully be the nerdiest thing that I say on this podcast <laughs> I had a, we talked about this before, but I had, instead of just the movie one, I downloaded a desktop theme that oh, was yep. the animated mm-hmm. series. When it started, when it turned on my computer, it was the opening theme. Yeah. When it shut down, it was Magneto's big speech at the end of his episode. He's like, you and your X-Men defend those. It's just this whole <laughs> thing. It would take two minutes to shut down. But Worth it. I just constantly heard the uh, the lines. Uh, it's adamantium tasting time mm-hmm. and uh, sending you back to, I go where I want to go. Oh my it's word. Everything. He said, I go where where I yeah. want to go three yeah. times. When we go throughout the story, where did Wolverine go this episode? I go where I want to go. Well, okay. Uh-huh. Was he at the mall or was he outside? No, we first meet Wolverine in the danger room. So That's Jubilee right. is, right. is saved from the Sentinels by all of them. Cyclops mm-hmm. shows up just as she's knocked out of, uh, with knockout gas. Yeah. Cuts the... Sentinel's head off with his laser beam. And then they take her back to I do appreciate that Cyclops is effective in this show. He's very effective. So he's... He's he's powerful uh, and strategic, which is very nice. He... I mean, Rogue's, like, punching the Sentinels down, but Cyclops Mm -hmm. seems to be the only one whose, like, laser beam actually, like, knocks over a Sentinel. Yeah, he seems... That seems to be, if I'm remembering correctly, 
Mm-hmm. That seems to be kind of a running theme throughout the show, mm-hmm. where, like, if they really need something to end, uh-huh. it's got to be Cyclops. Yeah, that might be true. Like, everyone else can do stuff, <laughs> and they can take things down, but, yeah. like, when they really need the big guns, it's always uh-huh. Cyclops. Yeah, do you think he go? He walked into the writer's room and was like, guys, I need this. Can <laughs> need you this. please just give me the last please. hit? <laughs> please, please. Um, oh, one thing about this before we move on. Uh-huh. When, uh, when Jubilee runs out uh-huh. and, and runs into Cyclops right before he knocks down the Sentinel, uh-huh. he says something thing i can't remember what it was he says like i can't remember what it was energy blast huh yeah, here's one it. from a pro that's it that's yeah. it well i was watching this today with my son who's five uh-huh. and he said that and weston was just like huh, cyclops is funny <laughs> oh wow that and i was like oh boy yeah. we need to write somebody a boy line. yeah cyclops just made the, re- yeah, cyclops. the most inaccurate first impression <laughs> you could ever expect so jubilee wakes up in the mansion She's just been kidnapped. Yeah, I guess that's the thing. Everybody just wakes up in the mansion. You just wake up in the mansion. Yeah, that's how you get to the mansion. You're just like, hey, can I can I come with you guys? Okay, but hang on. Mm-hmm. Breathe into this. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, th- that's similar. So in the comics, Jubilee's first introduced. She is hiding out in a mall. She's an orphan living on her own, mm-hmm. and she's living in a mall. And the, the Lady X-Men mm-hmm. are like Lady X-Men. at the mall shopping mm-hmm. and so it's like psylocke and uh storm and rogue and everything mm-hmm. and she sees them fight some uh some villains and then disappear into a portal mm-hmm. and she follows them oh see i kind of so. like that better i mean oh. the this opening is very 90s yeah. and very approachable but yep. I, I like that that story better professor x and gene are talking about how bad everything is mm-hmm. and we see uh, morph yeah, uh, watching TV. The line that I have always, I've always liked the bit where he turns into Senator Kelly. Mm-hmm. He's like, "My fellow Americans, I, I am, am an idiot." idiot. <laughs> it's, it's, that's that's a good one. I don't love all of Morph's jokes. So no, I liked but, him more in this than I yeah. remembered. I remembered really hating Morph. Yeah, he's grown on me, I guess, yeah. over the years. Morph is actually he's he's a weird inclusion because I guess he's an adaptation of the character the Changeling from like the early 60s era x-men okay because he even has the character design and powers but they don't call him change they, they just call, call him morph. morph and morph then becomes a character in the age of apocalypse hmm. who i guess is the changeling but he is named morph but he doesn't look like either of the two <laughs> so um so comics yeah she gets trapped in the danger room because she's trying to run away yeah she starts to run away yeah. and they have they do like a red alert and yeah. there's like a voiceover. Yeah, Professor Xavier's X being voice. like, we have an intruder. Yeah, it's like, yeah Xavier can't what just be heck? like, hey, everybody, Jubilee's awake. As soon as he started talking, I was like, okay, so he's going to, it's going to yeah. be like in. She's trying to escape. In the X-Men movie where yeah. he's like, calm down or no. whatever. No. Intruder. Intruder. And she runs and she gets into the danger room, mm-hmm. which it's, it always like makes me laugh. I like the danger room. I love the danger room. But every it's time cool you opens. see something that's like about to kill somebody if yeah. they were a second slower. I'm like, that doesn't really train you. It just almost kills you. It just you. almost kills you. It's the gambit... I always assume that there must be some S- fail safe. It... So this is the Gambit Wolverine yeah. system. So Wolverine and Gambit are fighting, but Gambit almost gets crushed in a pillar. Yeah. The pillar grabs his coat and like he just gets out of there. Yeah, you're right. And I'm just like, where's the fail safe? That's pretty scary. This... I like this danger room because it's got the two modes. You've got the physical stuff and then you've got the computerized mm-hmm. stuff. I actually don't know if at this time, uh, in 92, where the comics are with the Danger Room in terms of oh, yeah. what it presents. Because usually it is a lot of physical stuff. And then it gets Shi'ar Tech. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we get Wolverine and Gambit fighting. And yeah, then you get kind of their whole relationship. A whole, a whole exposition of everybody. And then uh, Wolverine tackles Gambit mm-hmm. and Jubilee Knocks Wolverine blasts over. him, yeah. which is fun. Yeah. And, and everyone laughs at him. Yeah. Yeah, Beast and Morph find it hilarious. But she takes him out. Yeah. Like, she knocks him across the room. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, he just goes flying. Yeah. And he's even, like, having to, like, rub his head. Yeah. Like, get his, he's get his bearings back. A lot of introductions of the characters. They have to go invade. They have to go to the Mutant Control Agency to delete all the files because mm-hmm. now they know that the Sentinels are using it, or the Sentinel program is using it to mm-hmm. capture mutants. And it was so funny because Jubilee gets captured at one point, and Gyrick is like, I wanted to just do a test to see how easy it would be to capture other mutants. I'm like, how easy it is by capturing Jubilee? They're gonna capture a teenager yeah. who barely knows that she's a mutant. Yep. This will be and just this as... will be the test. Yep. But it's it is interesting because he it's I guess mm-hmm. maybe I feel like this could be a bit of a hole uh-huh. because they talk about how they have like hundreds, thousands of yeah. mutants registered, but. They have no clue who the X Men are. Who the X Men are. Every time an X Men shows up, the Sentinels like unidentified mutants. Like, yeah. well, who do you have so, identified? So like, they've been like 
hardcore yeah. under wraps, I well, guess. Yeah, so this, I mean, we, Xavier and Cyclops have a dialogue about how, how they're going to, like, reveal that they exist mm-hmm. to the world, yeah. uh, that they have been in hiding. So it's it's weird. The There's a lot of chronological issues with the whole how long have they been together. Yeah. Because this isn't technically the first team, because in some flashback episodes in the future, we'll see, oh, like, the original yeah. five. Yeah, and so, I mean, I guess if they've had, like, the entire season kind of worked out the timeline, it sort of seems like they would have worked out that yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, and people seem very familiar with the concept of mutants. I mean, there's enough that they have a bunch of news footage of it. Even yeah. Magneto is spotted, like, very quickly. Yeah. Domino's in one scene. So, yeah, like, Domino was there. They're, they're about, and it seems like there's enough of them, and we'll see, like, Genosha later on, mm-hmm. but... Uh, not the X Men yet. Yeah. So this is their coming out party. That conversation. Their sweet sixteen. <laughs> that conversation between um, Xavier and Cyclops uh-huh. is an example of where they kind of have a little bit more of a grown up style because it's a it's more like subtle kind of a conversation. Yeah. Because they don't really expressly say what they're talking about. Yeah. Cyclops comes out and he talks to Xavier. Cyclops he... runs awkwardly out. Okay. Animation Cyclops quality stumbles wise. out of the room. <laughs> And he just, he just says, like, you've always, you know, said that we need to be using our powers for the good of mankind, so... Mm-hmm. And he doesn't say anything. And Xavier's like, yes, well, but we have no choice. <laughs> yeah. And the, the understanding is mm-hmm. that he's objecting to, like, yeah. using violence, and this yeah. is not a good idea. You to, know like, I believe image. in your idea as but much as never, anyone, but... Yeah, but they never say that. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a more, it's a more adult style mm-hmm. of storytelling. Yeah. This, before they go in there, this is the bit where Wolverine's like, I go where I want to go. <laughs> the first time. Yeah. <laughs> they, they picked the people for the mission, who uh-huh. were the three wrong people for the right, mission. Right, but Wolverine wants to go after Jubilee. But Wolverine wants to go after Jubilee, mm-hmm. and he goes where he wants to go. Right. So he takes off. And I think he doesn't intend to go on the mission at all. Right. But, but then, then he, he shows up yeah. later because he lost the trail. He lost yeah. the trail outside of the house. Yeah. Not got, even, like, far away. And then he got just, bit by a dog. And then he got bit by a dog. Yep. <laughs> Though it's funny, because, like, Xavier's like, you'll take three X-Men, but everybody's on the mission. It's the... Yeah, why is everybody on the yeah. mission? And Gamba keeps being like, I can do it. Yeah. And, he, and like, if I was doing this, yeah. everything would be fine. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there being like, yeah, Probably. you're absolutely right. The only person who should be in that building is uh-huh. Gambit. He should go in. He just blow he everything do up. His thing. He should come out. <laughs> yeah. Everything would be fine. Yeah. Hillary's showing no. her fan colors here. Yeah. Let's, I mean, okay, yes, I am a Gambit you need, fan. But you need just, Beast on computers. Like, from a reasonable standpoint, uh-huh. maybe you maybe you bring Beast as well. Uh-huh. But Gambit is the obvious person yeah. for this job. Storm seems like an odd pick for indoor stuff. Why? Why would you ever bring Storm in this situation? Yeah. Who is it? It's Storm, Beast, and... Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. Wolverine is not necessary. Wolverine's tra- stealthy. It's well, madness. I mean, again, it just blows things up. It's utter madness. All right. So <laughs> they break in. They realize they're, they know they're coming and it's going to be a trap and everything. Mm-hmm. And they call the Sentinels. Yep. Uh, and, but and that's boy, how episode on. one ends. Yeah, and with, that was a quick. That was yeah. a quick episode. It yeah. was shorter than I. I mean, I knew it was going to be. Like it's a normal size episode. There's just so it much. Just felt really. There's so quick. much character introduction and yeah. exposition because the second episode does feel a little longer. That's true. Here's something interesting that I picked up on. Okay. In this first episode, mm-hmm. it starts with Jubilee's parents, uh-huh. and then it goes into the guards at this place. Uh-huh. They make humans more uh, sympathetic. Uh than I think in anything else that I have seen in X-Men. Like, Mm. it seems very purposeful because the mom, the foster mom, Uh is just 100% on Jubilee's side. The dad thinks he's being on Jubilee's side. Like, he's he's like a fool, but Mm -hmm. he's like trying to help her. And then when somebody breaks in to the (laughs) mutant whatever center, Uh control agency, leaps over the thing, the guard runs up, first thing he says is, are you okay? (laughs) The dad looks like he's played by Andy Richter. Yeah, which I him. which I realized in the second episode, I'm like, this is an Andy Richter design. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he is definitely like the bump. Yeah, it's surprising. He just this, he's like when he comes out to offer them soda later on, mm-hmm. soda on a platter. Yep. It's like soda. Can I? He, he's spilling it out. You expect him like having to get out a no, handkerchief whoa. to wipe his forehead. Like oh, I'm sorry. I'm just. Is it hot in here? <laughs> Uh, yeah, the guard asks if he's okay because they throw morph over the fence. Mm-hmm. They're not being converted at all. He's like, "Can you get me over there?" Like, it's yeah. Funny too because he says, "Can you get me over there?" Yeah. And they just like launch him yeah, over. Yeah. Like, Wolverine's like, "I guess we can." Yeah. <laughs> 
so the Sentinels show up, and a lot more than just one show up. Yeah, uh, they just they're, keep coming. Trask says they're not gonna. They're trying not to like go out there yeah. to to uh, until they have a hundred. Until they have a hundred Sentinels, yeah. but they've sent out like it seems like fourteen it's or like fifteen, yeah. and now they've lost them all. I don't know like yeah. what your you Maybe know cost. Maybe they're like and... on their way. Yeah. I don't understand the strategy. It sort of seems like this. It seems like Gyrich is just kind of an idiot. Like, it sort of seems like he's in charge. Mm-hmm. Like, Trask is, like, a lesser partner, in, it seems like, in their interactions. Mm. But he's, I mean, he just, like, goes out and just, like, ruins their plan. Yeah. Grabs some teenager and gets yeah. a whole bunch of their sentinels destroyed. Just, like, yeah, for no reason. Jubilee, apparently. she gets captured again. Right. She gets captured and brought to the sentinel yeah. base yep. with Henry Gyrich and Trask. But... During the X-Men battle with the Sentinels, mm-hmm. Morph dies. He dies. Dun, dun, yeah. dun. Seemed to affect a lot more people than it ever affected me. They were very sad, which yeah. I mean, I think of Morph uh-huh. as not really part of the team. Yeah. But, like, from the character's perspective. Yeah, he's been there for a while. He's been there for a while. Yeah. They're friends or whatever. Yep. Wolverine takes it hard. This is another more complex moment because Jean, with her fantastic costume, she approaches Wolverine, because Wolverine is taking this badly. Yeah, Cyclops had to call everyone out. He ordered mm-hmm. the retreat, even though Beast was captured and which Morph is probably dead. Which off screen. It we happens off screen this. until we see it in like a weird flashback. Yeah, which is very complex storytelling. Yeah. Again, this is... Morph's death is off screen due mm-hmm. to standards and uh, mm-hmm. practices, broadcasting rules. But you don't really see anything about how But we find out he's dead because Jean is... Uh, using Cerebro mm-hmm. and loses contact and then, or feels the death pains. Right. And then Xavier's like, let me see if I can sense him. But I he's, can't. Can't, he's not there! Wolverine is very upset about he's this all. He's very upset. So apparently they're friends. I don't know. We'll just have to take that. Later on, too. Wolverine, in a, in a different episode, Wolverine mentions that Morph was the only one who could ever make him laugh. Oh, yeah, you're right. But yeah, Wolverine is very upset with Cyclops for ordering the retreat. Yeah, he's he punches him in the stomach. Yep. Right when he gets right off in the, the stomach. Then he leaves... He's going to go, I don't even know, Play avenge pool. him or something. Yeah. And so he goes out, he tears apart Cyclops' car. Tell Cyclops I made him a convertible. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then Jean runs out and starts, and is like, it wasn't his fault. And then he drives and away. And then he drives away, and she says, it's not your fault either. And it's yeah. like this complex emotional moment yeah. where like the viewer realizes that yeah. he's angry at Cyclops because he's angry he at himself. himself. Yeah. Wolverine has layers. <laughs> he has layers. Um, he's an onion. Yeah, because he goes driving to like just a cliff to mourn mm-hmm. and say he'll avenge him. And it's during that drive we see the whole flashback That's of everything. Right. And then Wolverine goes place pool and gets harassed by like a Jack Nicholson impersonator. Like a hardcore yeah. Jack. I wrote down yeah. Jack Nicholson. Yep. It is very intense. Yeah. This is our table. Why don't you get out of here for a face? Yeah. That's what it is. Wolverine, again, for the third time in two episodes, says, I go where, where I want to go. go. Why That's his he... thing. I mean, he changes his inflection just a tiny bit that makes yeah. me wonder if it's like... I'm tired of saying this. If it's like purposeful, like yeah. he's like, no, listen, yeah. world, yeah. I go where I want to <laughs> go. But I don't know. I don't think it's a successful choice. Henry Gyrich is freaking out because the president is not happy with the Sentinels. The president, who is a woman, yeah. surprise. In a... When Henry Gyrich goes visit her in the White mm-hmm. House, she's on an elliptical. I love that. In a tracksuit. I love that scene so much. I have to tell you, the president's tracksuit taught me it's okay to be weird (laughs) (laughs) it's like this yellow and black nine it's just so it's very 90s and weird nonsense and i love it because it's so empowering actually at the time because it's like she's the president Mm -hmm. she gives that speech you have no doubt that this is a legit president yeah and then when she's confronting this like basically like a military power yeah, I didn't, in the Oval Office, she won't she, even get off the elliptical. She's just yeah. doing her daily workout, yeah. whatever, and she's like, "Yeah, you're fired, whatever." <laughs> yeah, she's not happy because she believed the whole spiel that this is going to like protect mutants, and she's like, "Well, why did the X Men risk their lives?" Yeah, and it let was one of their such own get a captured? thoughtful response to have yeah. to what happened because you you see so many of these kinds of things mm-hmm. where someone is trying to manipulate the government or whatever, mm-hmm. and the president or whoever they're trying to manipulate just falls for it. Yeah. And like, it's sort of just a device to get someone who you think is like mm-hmm. a, a honorable person to do something bad. Right. But it's just so, it's not like they say something. Mm-hmm. The X-Men aren't like t- telling her and she's like, oh, well, I believe right. them. She's interpreting the actions, mm-hmm. the violent actions of these people. And she's like, well, 
seems to me that if they're willing to risk their lives, yeah. they must have a reason. Yeah, let one of them die, let one of them get captured. Yeah. yeah. It's she such a, a measured response. The the voice actress has like this weird I can't like figure yeah. out the voice she has this like weird I don't know if weird is that she's just kind of like slow mm-hmm. methodic, but there's also like there's some kind of accent going there's on. There's some sort of, sort of accent, there's some yeah. sort of crackliness. I think yeah. they were just going for like an interesting yeah. sounding voice. Yeah. Well, I guess they're coming off of Reagan and uh Bush Senior mm. at the time, so maybe they're like. We've just... had a lot of weird accents. Fun fact: I mean, I don't know how fun it is. you'll you'll appreciate this being fifty percent Canadian. Yes, hundred percent Canadian. Sort of both. Okay. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> the voice actors in this are Canadian. I could tell that Canada didn't have uh, royalty rights, so you didn't have to, you could hire Canadian voice <gasps> actors, and then you wouldn't have to pick up residuals. Oh to man! The so they were abusing those poor voice actors. A little bit. Uh, Storm is like three different voice actresses. The no. first episode, which has been replaced, she was a white woman, and they got rid of what? that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, the second one, because they were like, we did what? Because they, <laughs> they, you know, they made it in America, yeah. did the voice acting in Canada, so mm-hmm. they didn't know so like what, the voice, actresses, what mm-hmm. the voice actors looked like or anything, and then they found out, like, we cast Storm as who? Uh, <laughs> like and so they, into paper they ran out and got a different voice actress, oh, but geez. the voice actress who does season one was American, and so they're like, mm-mm, so they got... A Canadian huh. voice actress to... Does she just do a really good job, or do I just not notice? I think it's a pretty seamless transition. Yeah. I, you can kind, you can note, you can tell, but it's mm-hmm. it's a pretty good impression of the yeah. other one. Yeah, so Guy Rich is now like, we gotta move out of here and everything. Mm-hmm. But the X-Men have found out where they are, and yes. Cyclops goes to the bar. Wolverine's still all mad and everything, yeah. but Cyclops is like, what if I told you we can go get the Sentinel base? I gotta tell you, mm-hmm. I like Cyclops. Yeah, Cyclops is good in this episode. show. He's so... He's, he just presents as, like, sort of a legit leader. Mm-hmm. Like, he accepts all of the responsibility. Yeah, Wolverine says, you here to apologize? And he's like, I don't apologize for, for command, command decisions. decisions. Yeah. yeah. And then he, like, he just shows up. I mean, Wolverine just, like, vanished. Yeah. Like, was hugely insubordinate. Yeah. And then took off. <laughs> and then Cyclops finds him. Yep. Gets in his, like, civvies and yeah. just goes and is like, all right, well, we got to talk. Like, yeah. He just owns up to it it's just and he has a plan yeah and he's not wearing the hood yeah he's, he's, he's got his visor with his his cool hair in the he's breeze got the cool hair um, so yeah i'm digging yeah. him in this one I, well, I like i like the cyclops in this there's a few there's like a solo episode of cyclops later on that i also enjoy it's like oh, a yeah. western kind of episode oh i don't remember and then they go to the base and they smash everything up mm-hmm. wolverine's he just keeps insulting these Sentinels, and it's always so... He's like, the whole Tin Man, I'm sending you back to Oz, adamantium tasting time. Does he know that they can't hear him? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. They don't have yeah. feelings to hurt. It's funny, because, like, the X-Men Maybe are battling... Maybe that's why. It's like an outlet for all of his animosity. Mm, there you go, But yeah. he knows that they won't He just smashes anything. them up. Um, <laughs> all the other X-Men are fighting, like, full-size Sentinels, but then when Wolverine has to, like, climb on some boxes to get onto one's back, it looks like that Sentinel's a lot shorter than the others. It's Wolverine-sized. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, I mean, you have to feel bad because everybody else is just flying and yep. blowing them up. And Wolverine's like, hold on, I'm getting there. <laughs> I can do this. And they smash at the base and they free Jubilee. Mm-hmm. And, and everything's fine yep. the end. Jubilee says, uh, decides to go live with the yep. X-Men. She says they're the best foster parents. I think, they do, I think they do a pretty good job of explaining Jubilee ending up the mansion. Oop. Like for, as like a minor. Yeah. You know? Because like... Very early on, mm-hmm. they expressly say that they called her home yeah. to, like, check in and tell them where they are, and they just never heard back. Right. And then later, they do the whole thing with, like, talking to her foster yeah. parents and, like, we've decided that this is, it's just, it's pretty well mm-hmm. done, I think. That yes. it's not like, really? You're just gonna yeah, I mean, live with these the foster dad 17 is grown-ups? kind of naive and bumbly, but he's not, like... Mm-hmm that big of an idiot he's not just a yeah. uh, he's not like the town fool or something yeah he's just sort of a standard yeah. his dumb decisions are made with good intent right so and once he realizes what he's done he's like you gotta get out of here cyclops yeah that turnaround so, is really yeah. great cyclops just decapitates people the sentinels heads yeah and their legs like it's just, nothing yeah you know what if i ever build a robot uh-huh. i'm going to put it's like brain or uh-huh. whatever in like its stomach or yeah. something like in not in a limb not yeah. in the head not, not in a head think. yeah 
Yeah, we're not the the human body is not the best uh, mm -mm. weapon mm -mm. <laughs> to, to Don't design. Don't have the after. brain anywhere yeah. on yep. the outside. I do like I like the design of the Sentinels in this because they're mm -hmm. they're pretty much like comic accurate, but they they went for like the towering ones. Mm -hmm. Like I like the Sentinels fine in the Days of Future Past movie, mm -hmm. but they're not just like the big bulky yeah. grape flavored sentinels that these, we get in these, these are the sentinels yeah. i think of whenever i think of sentinels i think it was either my neighbor or my brother had one of these toys and it was like made to scale and this thing was massive and oh, i didn't wow. know what it was because at this time like i just i was slightly familiar with mm -hmm. certain things of x-men yeah and so i i just didn't know that's the that's basically the two-parter mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh i mean it's basically here to introduce everybody yeah. get some action in there and get everybody hooked yeah uh for i have a next. lot of I have a lot of emotional connection to this show. I had, yeah. but it finished, and I just thought that's a good show. Yeah, that's a good show. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Humor. <laughs> there's the drama. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dialogue is great. I wrote down so many lines right. of dialogue. There's the part that I I really appreciate where the X Men are going to the mutant control agency, and they're they're walking there from the blackbird mm -hmm. and they're just like talking yeah about things and I we, like know. we learned that how rogue's history yeah. with her discovering her power and it could just be a cheap yeah. way to get the background and i'm sure that it is yeah. but there's something about the atmosphere when they're talking that yes. just feels like this quiet calm mm -hmm. moment where they're just talking like they would yeah because they're friends listen when i at some point gosh how old were I? so about 19 uh it doesn't really matter the age when i was 19 i was putting together a x-men dungeons and dragons campaign for... this is what eric was doing when he was 19 i might have been 20 <laughs> so look it only gets older from there yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah uh so i was i was at my uh the place i was staying this is this is when i was on my own now too mm -hmm. so i'm living all by myself and i'm just i'm on my computer just typing out character designs and reading the the rule set mm -hmm. that i'm planning on using but trying to pick the characters i just put in my vhs copy of the x-men cartoon and it started with you know i just started at the beginning mm -hmm. and the same way that i feel like x-men 2 the movie is a good like two hour plus example of what the x-men are example of mm -hmm. just the first season of this show i feel like is it's even better of mm -hmm. an example because I mean everything in this is just so comic accurate most of the time. Yeah. But it it just put me right in the right mood, mm -hmm. right in the right tone. It has that the X Men are superheroes, but they they have to be like a, they have to be secret superheroes. They can't right. just live. They're not in just like the middle around. of New York. They they're doing covert mm -hmm. operations and they're all sad all, <laughs> a yeah. lot of times. <laughs> but I mean. It's, yeah, you're right about the atmosphere, because, like, even the music has this very, it's very, like, early 90s instruments, mm -hmm. but it is, it has, like, these somber tunes that are, they almost feel like cyberpunk at times, just very, yeah. like, cool, but also sad. A lot it's, better it's than... A it's a little sad. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a little bit an influence of, like, a, like, a soap opera kind of a soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Where it's, they have the techno mm -hmm. thing to kind of, like, fit with the theme. Yeah. But the the music, I feel like, is I feel like it's heavily influenced by by soap opera music Probably, because yeah. it's because it's um, very evocative in mm -hmm. specific situations, like right. interpersonal situations, yep. and like it's emotional, yeah, in a way that I don't think you get a lot of in early cartoons. But also think about like how much we already know about the characters mm -hmm. in even just the first episode, let the alone part two, all of their relationships, right. who likes whom, and it. And Pride of the X-Men was just like, her power is lasers. Her yep. power is <laughs> storms. And it's just, like, that's all we learn about those characters. Yeah. Who and, wrote this? I mean, the show was developed by Eric Lewald, Sidney Awanter, and Mark uh, Edens. Written by Mark Edwards Edens. Story edited by Eric Lewald. Directed by Larry Houston. But, like, the dialogue... Okay, for instance, Beast. The things that I have read... With Beast. Mm -hmm. um, in comics. In the comics, like earlier comics. Oh, and yeah. like when they try to convey how smart he is, it's always so... Jokey. Yeah, it's jokey and it's like, it's like sort of cumbersome. It's like, mm. it's like they just like, if they had Google at the time, like they just Googled smart fact mm -hmm. and just had him just say whatever. Mm -hmm. But like in this, I feel like it's very artfully done because like when he, whatever he says... It's okay. Here's the difference. Uh huh. He's not smart in this. He's witty. 
Right. And he's not witty in the other presentations that I've seen from before this. He's just like some big nerd who uses big words. And Mm -hmm. everyone's like, I never know what you're talking about, Beast. But in this, he's like, well, read. He's quoting John Wesley. Like, he's just very like, I just like how they present him. In the book, previously on Mm X-Men, they taught, uh, they, a lot of the interviews with the writers and uh, Eric Lewald himself talk about how much they liked writing Beast Mm -hmm. just because they're writers. And so they like writing and Beast just gave them a lot of chances to write. And they also like bringing in the quotes and showing off their own intelligence See, that's that comes out really yeah. a lot that's really cool yeah he has this one line that's just eureka as soon as i the, oh. the eureka line was really good yeah uh a lot of it too i think is the delivery of the voice actor yeah the voice actor for beast is great yeah he's got a he's got a very a very um fluid delivery it doesn't mm-hmm. feel like he's putting anything on but right. he has this one line where he quotes a poet there's the the lasers on the ground mm-hmm and he says some quote, and then he mm. says, a minor poet for a, for a minor <laughs> obstacle. Yeah. And I was just like, that's that's a lovely yeah. turn. You yeah. know, like, that's just a well-written line yeah. just thrown into a 90s cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's a chapter in this book where he just lists every, every time he used a quote and why he chose it or something. Mm-hmm. At the time, a lot of people really liked Gambit. Gambit was mm-hmm. pushed by Marvel because he was like... The, the hot new thing mm-hmm. in the comics. But, you know, he's he'd only been around for two years. But It's interesting. Lot, he's different. A lot of people. And the voice actor's very good. Gambit it's is funny. good. In the first two episodes, he's he's almost more the comedic relief. Yeah. He's he's just so cocky and sure of himself. Mm-hmm. But it, there's less of that, like, dark, mysterious yeah. Gambit, who shows up in a couple episodes from now. Yeah. But in this one, he's just he's doing his charming thing. Yeah, he's charming. He's, he's interacting with Jubilee. Yeah. And kind of like a... a He's he's at a good level in this. He has a good a good moment later on when uh when uh Wolverine is sad about uh-huh. morph, morph. Uh-huh. and he is the one Gambit is the one to come over and he like puts his hand on Wolverine's <laughs> yeah. shoulder and he's like he's gone Monami like, and I don't know it just I just feel like they constructed all of the character act- interactions mm-hmm. just really well to like convey all of the all of the complex yeah relationships mm-hmm. because like. Gambit is the one who would feel more comfortable doing something with Wolverine because he is more of the, like, we have both have rough, had rough lives. They understand each other in more of a... I always think grown-up. It's not grown-up. But, like, more of a... Like, if Wolverine is feeling isolated and, like, he's gonna go do some damage, then Gambit is the one who I feel like would have credibility to approach him in that moment, Mm -hmm. like emotional credibility. Like Wolverine might respect that in him more than he would like say a Cyclops. Right. It's good that we get a lot of beast in the first two episodes because he's going to be in jail for the whole season. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. They lost Morph Uh and left beast behind. Yeah. Beast is in the credits. He's going to be in the opening credits for 13 episodes. Yeah. But he is not going to be in the episodes. That's crazy. What else? Hang on. Is that true? Because doesn't doesn't Magneto release No, we'll see him like once or twice in prison. Oh, but okay. he will not. But he's not like part of the story. Right. Line. He will be in prison. We'll see him uh, like it, having his trial, but he won't be like at the mansion and going on missions. They just do a lot of groundwork in the first yeah. episode, and it could it could have just been like we're the X Men, mm-hmm. we're mutants, tra la 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 la. But they do like really heavy story first season groundwork. Is so much more serialized than any other ep- season they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. They do multiple parts, uh, multiple parted episodes. The second season they try to get around the uh serialized nature fox tells them not to do serialized anymore but they kind of get away around that with the i don't know companies yeah. always do that i don't know every show yeah that i have loved uh-huh. has had at least one season uh-huh. where the production company or whoever was like we don't like you being serialized yeah do episodic and it just ruins things yeah. for however long it happens <laughs> i don't know files star trek yeah but Fox tells them in the second season to go episodic, but then they they do the whole Xavier Magneto in the Savage Land. Veronica uh, Mars, another thing. example. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Battlestar went the opposite route though, and that was a mistake. Oh, Battlestar. Anyway. I didn't even talk about Battlestar. <laughs> so that I mean that's the episode. We didn't even talk about the opening scene. The opening. The the opening credits. Yeah. So this... it is twice as long as I remembered. Is that true? Well, sort of, because I was I had it on mm-hmm. and sort of was distracted, I guess, mm-hmm. and then got back to it and was like, oh, it's still on. this, this is Isn't still it happening. only like a minute? 
I guess. I don't know. Seconds? It just it's was just longer minute than I expected. Long, yeah. But that's very long. A minute is very long for a Well, it has to opening. introduce nine characters yeah. and then show those nine characters doing Again. different things. And then in a group. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing that's always... I'm not always... complaining about the opening. The opening is amazing. <laughs> Here's one thing that's always struck me about the opening, besides just how cool it is in the music and everything. Yeah. It's that the oh, every X-Men's, we see their name mm -hmm. and their power, and it's always cool. Mm -hmm. But Cyclops starts it, and his is not a fun time. Like, he's not like, rawr, mm -hmm. jump. He he doesn't have his... His, his power well, his is, is just like out of control. Yeah. He's It's blasting into the eye. He looks like he's, he's freaking out. He's not in out. uniform, is he? He's he not in... Like he's in civvies. jacket or something? And it's just like... He's close to the screen. It pans him out, uh -huh. and he's just like, "No!" Yeah. And then it goes to Wolverine. He's like, "Watch out, bub!" That's and it's just, true. and everybody else is showing off, but Cyclops is just like, "Why, Lord?" Yeah. And but that's always kind of like that has always kind of struck me, and and like everything I do with Cyclops, I think is almost rooted in just that one shot yeah. in that intro. Just like, well, boy, I mean, it sucks it, to be Cyclops. Yeah, it works because yeah. there's always that inner turmoil. But I, we probably could have just done an episode on. Just Probably. a minute long. I've always appreciated the like scene with Jubilee get running from the crowd, and then she gets to the chain link fence, mm -hmm. and it just cuts out. Yeah, like she. What happened to her? Yeah, and and also like Beast is like down around some like uh, debris, uh -huh. and spotlights blast on him, and you're like, oh no! And yeah. it's always this like very like the X Men or like fugitives on the run yeah. kind of setting, and then like the weird teams that charge at each other mm -hmm. don't don't make a lot of sense uh, they're just like it's just a chance to see yeah. like the variety it includes the villain side includes thunderbird an <laughs> x-men character uh, a, you know an actual x-men who died yeah. so he's on the wrong side but they just put him in there as a fill-in and then a little short guy with a big head who's just an original design really yeah <laughs> what the heck yeah that's weird is it that crazy animation company just going amok no i think it was just one of the designers you they know just we threw need something in. We need a short guy with a big head. With a big head. Can we can yeah. we do that? We can do that. Yep. We can do that. So the one you watched today, you watched it on the DVD, right? Yes. I watched it on the DVD. I can't remember the VHS ends with the... I was so excited to watch it on the VHS. Sorry. And I couldn't find it. I'm and now sorry. here it is, yeah. right here. Oh, uh, we'll, be, we'll be watching them in order of the actual order they're supposed to be. They're not in order on the DVDs. Yeah, they're never on order. in order. Yeah, anything. there's going to be some future episodes. I was going to say... The end credits also have that like CGI character. I have never liked that. No, it looks bad. I don't have like you that seen either. the cool like Japanese anime style end credits? No. That's pretty cool. With like uh, the X Men fighting like the Brood oh, and Omega no. Red. That's pretty sweet. Huh. I think that it'll show up in some later episodes. Oh, that's cool. All right, so Night of the Sentinels parts one and two. Yeah, you can watch it on DVD or if you still have the Pizza Hut. Uh, yeah. episodes that had like Stan Lee and uh, Scott Lobel and everybody mm -hmm. talking about it. Oh, Stan Lee almost ruined the intro. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, Stan Lee wanted to like come on like Walt Disney used to do yeah. in you know, his cartoons and he would like have a board with characters and he's like, here's what you're going to see in this episode. No, thank and you, Stan Lee. Talk about, and then at the end he was going to do it again. He's like, wasn't that exciting, True Believers? Yes, and, Stan. Uh, him and Eric Luwald got into some heated arguments mm -hmm. and had to go like to the board <laughs> and well Lewin the right was like if you want stan made. fine but i'm leaving if this is what's gonna happen really yeah wow good for him i love all <laughs> the people taking stands on this see this, this is cartoon, why it's yeah. so good because yeah. people were passionate yeah. about it and they really they like stood up for it i yeah. think that's really impressive and it gets bad when studio starts mm -hmm. getting cheap yeah and controlling yeah exactly so. General, like, end thoughts on Night of the Sentinels of these two episodes? I mean, uh, we've talked thoughts. about the whole... I thought it was... My husband called me uh -huh. about something else uh -huh. right when I was finishing this episode, uh -huh. and the thing that I wanted to say to him uh -huh. was that it was like a revelation of, like, female empowerment wow. to watch this episode. In 2019. Because, yes! Yeah. Because it is incredibly... It's just... It's like someone set out to mm -hmm. make a feminist hero show. Yeah. Because it's very, it's very intentional, it seems like, because mm -hmm. the women mm -hmm. are all active. They have more power, mm -hmm. really, than most of the men. A lot of the time, the men will sort of posture, but the women actually do the stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, they're fleshed out characters. They are not remotely set up to be like like counterparts to the men you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's not like they only exist because but the guys in this show 
then don't say like I'm not gonna be saved by a girl. Oh no way! So like, yeah. there's a scene where Rogue is shot by a sentinel. Yes. And Gambit picks her up and carries her. Uh-huh. But then two more sentinels show up, and she's like, "Time to fly!" And she picks Gambit she up picks and flies. She picks him up. And like in another cartoon, Gambit would be like, "Oh no! Now yeah, I'm the princess to be girl. saved or something." Yeah. Instead, yeah. Gambit's like, "Yeah, get us out of here." Yeah. <laughs> Good it's call. It's just so well fly. balanced. Yeah. And then they have, of course, the female president. I was just <laughs> so pleased yeah. watching this because a lot of the time something and it's the 90s it's not Mm -hmm. like the ancient history but that's that's still sort of like (laughs) misogyny still and like i was i was just very surprised because even at the time if they were specifically trying Mm -hmm. to be feminist you would you would usually still see hallmarks Mm -hmm. of of like misogyny just from like the the stuff that the writers just have in their minds. Mm-hmm. And so, like, they it just comes out and they aren't even thinking about it. But I didn't see anything. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any, like, red flags <laughs> of anything. Right. And it was just so refreshing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My standout from this episode. I think the 90s did a lot of work for that. Mm-hmm. That then got lost in yeah, the 2000s. Yeah, I was trying to think about that. I think I think that might yeah. be true. I think now the Sentinels, again, like, it. I did it when I was 20 to, like you know, put myself in, like, the right mm-hmm. X-Men mood, and it, it's a, it's the same thing again. I think that's the whole first season, especially because it's so serialized, and it just all leads into each other. Mm-hmm. Just a standalone, the pilot is pretty darn good. Yeah, it is. Uh, especially, especially after Pride of the X-Men. I know Pride of the X-Men has some <laughs> of its, like, it has its defenders, and even I had, like, a good time this would go around watching it, but Night of the Sentinels is just so... Like ahead of the game, yeah, uh, and just doing all that legwork and oh, yeah. getting so much right, and I, I always appreciate how accurate it is. So the next time we cover <clears throat> the animated series will be Enter Magneto, mm-hmm. and then whatever's after that. <laughs> the yeah, I can't remember uh, Enter Magneto and like Cruel Don't Don't Trust oh, Sabretooth as a babysitter. Yeah, Cruel Don't Not Trust Sabretooth as a babysitter. Yeah. The next episodes will be Enter Magneto and Deadly Reunions. Deadly Reunions. So we're going to see a lot of Magneto and Sabretooth in the mm-hmm. next two episodes. Yeah. So. I'm okay with that. All right. I like Sabretooth in the Oh, suddenly you like Sabretooth now. I've always been an intense fan of Sabretooth. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm Dust vs. Tweak Everywhere Online, and apart from other shows on the Radio Meanwhile Network, I'm the co-host on the podcast, The All the Book Show. Uh, when were you, you were just on there recently. In episode yes, one ninety eight, was I it the Captain Marvel one or have no one ninety eight for X Men for X Men? That's right. X-Men yeah, one. did our yep. our uh, previously on X episode that we let Nick be a part of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Prophetic Music for our theme song. Uh, join us next episode for a character spotlight. And again, you can find more about this show and others like it at the network's website, RadioMeanwhile.com. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Previously on X. Please rate, subscribe, and share the show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. Yeah.